put the music down here. So I think I pushed one of these buttons. I don't know which one of these buttons I pushed. Because I don't know what any of these buttons do. Yeah. No, apparently grown ups do.
The Lord be with you. Two uh, things are happening today. One is it is uh, Quilt Sunday, as you can see, and we will have a blessing of the quilts uh, during the children's time. Also, we are going to receive new members. And I'm, I know somebody else was here to be received, and I don't see them yet, so we'll do that right after the sermon. Uh, in our prayers, you're going to hear the name, you're going to hear two names, Wayne and Marietta Meyer. Wayne, of course, is our drummer. Wayne and Marietta were involved in a car accident yesterday. And when I left the hospital, it looked as though Wayne was going to go home. I didn't see how because he wrenched his back terribly. Um, and Marietta uh, had more extensive uh, injuries, uh, five different bro broken bro bones or uh, other problem. And she'll be in the hospital for quite some time. So they, they need extra prayers this week. Remember them in, in your prayers. Also, well, we're going to have an announcement about Trunk or Treat. Maria. So, quick announcement. Next Sunday at 4 p.m., 4 to 6 p.m. is Trunk or Treat. I have a few things I need to wrap up in getting that ready as far as the games are concerned. So, instead of today after church, We've decided to do it Wednesday. More families will be here Wednesday evening, so if anybody wants to come for that, it's really simple, making signs. Um, if anyone wants to donate a little bit more candy, I think that would be helpful. And then, of course, if you want to have a trunk, that would be great as well. Again, four to six, we're going to have a few games, face painting. It's a great time for everyone, and hope to see you there. Thank you, Maria. You should receive in the mail this week. Uh, yeah, mailing went out this past week. Uh, a uh, stewardship mailing, a uh, live simply mailing. I see those people that are going to be received as new members all are here. So I'm going to ask you to come forward at this time to be received. So Robin, you can come up. This is always a simple ceremony, and the hardest thing that's going to happen is you're going to turn around and face the congregation. As soon as we're done, you are members of Messiah Lutheran Church. And as a member of Messiah Lutheran Church, here are your duties. You all have things to do. You are to join with us in worshiping God, the hearing of his word, and the sharing of his supper. You are to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, serve all people, and strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If you're willing to do that, say yes by the help of God. This congregation promises to pray for you, to be, encourage you in your faith, to be workers with you so that God's kingdom can be realized among us and through us. And therefore, I ask the congregation, if you're willing to do that, say yes by the help of God. 
And now let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for these new members of Messiah Lutheran Church. By your life-giving power, bind us to each other in you, strengthen us for service, support us all our days, and bring us at length to that day when all your children will be one and you will be all in all. Amen. So, Robin, welcome. Nia, welcome. Naya, welcome. Excuse me. Katie, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. And now you may be seated. And I am done with announcements. Please rise and sing.
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful Father, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, remembered and forgotten, committed and omitted. By the power of the Holy Spirit, uphold us to live and serve you in our lives. Show us your grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I read the gospel lesson, I forgot to give you the absolution. So, yes, the bad news is we are sinners, but the very good news is that God cares about us, and for the sake of Jesus and his death on the cross, God Almighty forgives us, forgives you and I, all our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel lesson comes from the 18th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and to not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had any respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her request, her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
struggling with that. All right, I'd uh, like the children to come forward. And you can have a seat right here. How many of you watched the TV show, The Big Bang Theory? Do you, Cooper? I'm not suggesting that anyone should watch it, but if you do. I watch it Yeah. Thank you. They're nutty characters, aren't they? And probably the nuttiest is Sheldon, right? Mm -hmm. And Sheldon often would get up in the middle of the night and go across the hall. He lives in an apartment. And across the hall, his friend Penny lives. Middle of the night. And he would want to talk to Penny. So what he would do, first he would say, Penny. And then he would go, knock, knock, knock. Penny. Knock, knock, knock. Penny, knock, knock, knock. Penny, knock, knock, knock. Penny, knock, knock, knock. And sometimes even go on longer than that. What would Penny do? She'd eventually get there. And she looked like she just crawled out of bed, her hair disheveled, and um, she would say, What do you want? Sheldon. Well, the re reason I brought up that example is that Jesus says that's what we're to be doing. We're to be doggedly persistent in doing a couple of things. Praying for justice. God will answer. That God loves us so much. He does answer. But when we're working for justice and praying for justice, it sometimes takes a long time. And then we're all to be working together for justice. See all these quilts? That's justice work. That's mission work. All those are going to people in our community to um, keep them warm and keep them, give them a feeling of comfort and safety. Why does it take so long for God to answer? No, why, is it, why does it, why does church take so long? <laughs> why does church take so long? When you grow up, you'll go, oh, well, that didn't take so long. Why? I, I don't know what happens when we grow up, but we can deal with those things better. That's, um, Let's go on. Everyone hold a, a quilt. Let's put our hand on a quilt. And the people in the pew, put your hand on a quilt. Okay? And we'll pray. Okay? Gracious God, as we place our hands on these quilts, we won't pray together. Gracious God, as we place our hands on these quilts, we join giver and receiver recognizing the unity of all your people in the body of Christ. We give thanks for all the variety of gifts that compose these quilts, and we give thanks for the fellowship of all who work together to make the quilts. And we remember those who have received quilts in the past and pray that their lives have returned to stability. We ask that you bless the fruits of our labor and the whole mission of Messiah Lutheran Church, that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. Bless all who give and all who receive, as we are sown together in the unity of your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Thank you.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is uh, part of our live, live Simply um, stewardship series, and we're going to talk about persistence, uh, a, a quality of a uh, congregation that's that, that we're, where we're good stewards is being persistent in mission. Ruth Ann Roy uh, tells this story. It, her father was dying, and she was... Uh, particularly bothered by a steep decline in his health that she saw and it seemed to be a, a steady persistent decline and it was particularly troubling for her. It was midnight she left her father in the care of her son and went grocery shopping. She wanted to buy groceries that were particularly uh, things that her father would want so that he could have a few earthly joys left before he died. And she parked her car, and as she walked into the, the store, she, she prayed that God would send someone to her that she could talk with and unburden her this heavy load of worry and care she had over the death of her father. She got in the store, grabbed her cart, looked around the store, and as you can imagine, at midnight, very few people there, no one she recognized except maybe the cashier. So she goes to an aisle and stoops over to pick up something that her father, she knew, would enjoy. And when she looked up, she saw two women walking down the aisle, and they had kindness in their eyes, and smiles on their faces and she was taken aback by that. And when they got to her, she, they stopped. And they didn't say anything so she immediately started telling them her problems. They listened. And as soon as she was done, they came around her side of the cart and hugged her. And one said, I don't know whether it's going to be in this world or the next, but I know your husband will be healed. And the other one said, God has a place for your husband, or for, excuse me, your father will be healed. God has a place for your father, a place of comfort and joy. Don't worry. And they said a, said a prayer right there in the grocery store. And then the two women walked away. Ruth Ann Roy feels that they were angels. God sent two angels to see her. Now, whether or not you believe in angels, that's immaterial. What I think is two people, two Christian women, came down the aisle and when this woman unburdened herself they listened they did but they understood that they were called to do and that is bring we are all called to this bring God's wholeness and healing to this world. And we're supposed to be fighting the principalities and powers that go against that. Ruth Ann Roy said, when they prayed, I felt my whole body was washed with the peace of God. They brought healing and wholeness at that moment to Ruth Ann Roy. In her parable, this woman, this persistent woman, by the way, scholars are all troubled about how to deal with this parable. And uh, we looked at half a dozen different ways it's interpreted. I think 
the best way to interpret it is to see this woman doggedly would refuse to stop insisting that justice be done. Did it happen easily? No. That's why she needed to be persistent, not stop. We are to be persistent. God call, has called us to be persistent in our work for justice and healing in this world, bringing wholeness, justice, healing. We are to be persistent, never stop, never lose heart, which is so easy to do, to lose heart, isn't it? By the way, how many remember the movie Shawshank Redemption? Great movie, theme of baptism and rebirth through the whole film, if you didn't know that. All right, it, it's another sermon. Let's <laughs> but there's a great scene in the movie. By the way, I bought, bought the uh, movie script. Uh, there's a scene in that movie where Andy, uh, unjustly accused of murder, and or we at least find out he's innocent, and uh, he gets to work for the warden. And in his work for the warden, he decides this prison, the prisoners need a library. So he starts a letter campaign. Every single week he writes a letter to the prison board saying, this prison needs a library and I would be happy to set it up and take care of the library. Send me books. For six years he wrote letters. Six years. Wrote a letter every week. Finally, lo and behold, Boxes came, boxes of books, of records, even a record player. And Andy is opening them and, and taking delight in opening them and setting up shelves. And then he reads the letter that came with them. Here are your books and other things for your library. Stop writing us letters. And Andy then starts talking about what else he needs for the library. And the guard says, well, Andy, they just told you to stop writing. What are you going to do now? He says, I'm going to write two letters a week. Now that's persistence, right? That's the kind of persistence we are asked to be about as Christians and never go grow weary. We are not to tire of persisting, persisting and working for and seeking healing and justice, period. We pray, don't we? Every single week, and some of you may pray this daily. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth, as it is in heaven. That is what we are working for, day in and day out, as a body of Christ called Messiah Lutheran Church as Christians. God's kingdom. Martin Luther says God's kingdom comes even without our prayer, but we ask in this prayer that it will be found among us. We are not to tire of persisting in working for and seeking justice and healing we're to be united in this vision and this mission. United. We're doing it together. The Apostle Paul uses the analogy of a body. He first tells us that we're all gifted. We all have gifts from the Spirit to be working toward this vision and this mission as the body of Christ. And he said, uh, he talks about uh, uh, a foot can't, even though the foot says I'm not part of the body, it's still part of the body. And we're all part of the body of Christ and we're supposed to be working together. He said if we we're all one member, then where is the body? We're all working together. It's our vision, our mission, not 
my vision, my mission, our, working together to do this. Great illustration of this came from the 2014, <laughs> not 1914, I need to get in the right century, right? 2014, uh, University of Kentucky, Final Four team, with uh, Coach Calipari. It's interesting that Coach Calipari, because these players are so good, they're picked up by the, the pros all the time, he can't expect to have them very long. But he always recruits the star players on their basketball teams in high school. So that year, 2014, the starting players were all freshmen. All these stars from their high school years. And he said, when we started the year, we were terrible. We were ranked eighth, not in the nation, in their conference. They could not win a ball game because he had four, he had five stars trying to be stars. It's me. My vision. But he said, when I could get them to have a vision of being a team. And then he said, they learn to lose themselves in the team. And as they began to lose themselves in the team, they began to win. Well, we are a team. Whether you like it or not, we're a team. You've got quilts here. Can you imagine? Now, not everyone here made quilts. I stopped in there. Uh, just about every time they're making quilts. Uh, isn't it the second and the... Or is it the first, the second, and the fifth? Oh, first, third, and the fifth. Excuse me. Yes, first, fourth, third, and the fifth Mondays. And I usually stop in and say hi to everybody. I don't have the patience to make quilts. I just am not going to be there. And a lot of people, for time constraints and everything else, are not going to be there physically. But we are there. Remember, we're a body. We're a team. We are all participating in making those quilts. And when they get, to, get sent to somebody in Springfield, uh, unwed mothers, uh, the crisis, uh, domestic violence center, uh, nursing homes, um, infants uh, being adopted, all kinds of places that they're being sent to. Well, of course, those workers can be very proud that their quilts are there. But we, as Messiah Lutheran Church, can be very proud because it's us the team. We're doing it together in mission and ministry. Have they been persistent at making quilts? Been making them for the last 20 years that I've been here, and I know at least 20 years before that. Persistent every year. And we do it together. Now that's just one of all kinds of missions and ministries that go on in this congregation. This past week, another batch of quilts was sent to Lutheran World Relief. And along with those quilts, they uh, were sent boxes, uh, boxes and boxes full of moving blankets. And they make excellent quilts. I'm glad they're going overseas because uh, on those moving blankets, one side was soft. By the way, uh, Jerry um, Sherman had a moving business, and I guess he overbought or something because there were so many of those moving blankets. It's unbelievable. But 
soft on one side, waterproof on the other. And look, see that right there? That's a quilt. Isn't it amazing when people get those quilts, what they use them for? Um, I remember when uh, the trouble in Bosnia was happening. Literally, Lutheran World Relief quilts were being made into tents. Snow uh, drifts were drifting up against these quilts. It's amazing. So, we travel all over the world through the efforts of the people who made and collected those quilts and the baby care kits. By the way, this is an orphanage in Armenia. All the children are wrapped up with Lutheran quilts. So we're there. I, I'm not planning on making a trip to Armenia anytime soon, but we are there through those quilts. By the way, uh, Lutheran World Relief, some years, gathers, they put the goal just about every year of 500,000 quilts a year. Isn't that incredible? Just from we Lutherans. And also through Lutheran World Relief, baby care kits and uh, school packs and everything else. And why do they go? Why are we persistent in mission? We know that God so cares for us that our hearts have been changed. And with so much, and he's offered us healing and strength. And we so much want the world to know that healing and strength, even if it's as simple as praying with someone at midnight in a grocery store, or sending a quilt, or reading in an elementary school, the list goes on. God cares for us. We want to show that care, that healing, that justice to the world. Amen. Please rise and sing as we share our tithes and offerings.
Gracious God, you are the protector of all. You guard your people from, e from evil. Help us, your church, to provide healing and wholeness for all in need, all within our grasp. Lord, in your mercy, creator of all, you made the sun, the moon, and the stars. Bless efforts to restore clean air that your pure light may shine in the world. Lord, in your mercy, keeper of all life, you provide justice for the nations. We give thanks for those working to alleviate the suffering of millions from the hurricanes ravaging Latin America, the Caribbean, and parts of the United States. The starvation, we pray for the starvation and destitution and lack of medical care in so many countries, from Venezuela, Yemen, and Iraq. And we pray for the millions of refugees throughout the world. We pray for those children struggling to survive in refugee camps and trying to avoid being sold into child marriage or sex trafficking. Prince of Peace, send your peace. Let your peace vanquish the evil and let the evil let loose in your world, on your people. Lord, in your mercy, Nurturing healer, you reach out to those who have lost heart. Ease their suffering. Send your healing, especially to Carolyn Callan, Sophia F Fledgley, Emil Ghanem, Dennis Holmes, Janet Littlecrow, Chris Marquardt, Paul Olin, Jan Snaff, Sean Snellen, Chris Snyder, Lucy Stilwell, Paul Thompson, Bennett Wilkerson, Kathy Zinter, and Wayne and Marietta Meyer. Are there any others? We turn to thank you for all the abundant blessings from your hand. We are especially thankful that Andrew Stephen Malcolm is breathing on his own and doing well. And we continue to thank you for the birth of Nolan Charles Davis. We give thanks for the persistent witness of your blessed saints who now rest in your just and righteous presence. We pray that you comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Cindy Plaster, Maddie Bobrink, and Kelly Cowell. Lord, in your mercy. This is the first day of the rest of your life. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Cause even in the dark you can still see the light. It's gonna be Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. and great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me.
remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated. Join in one. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the gifts of his body and blood, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gift of life. We pray that you strengthen us so that we can leave here and fight for justice, be workers to bring your kingdom, to realize your kingdom among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Resources for growing ministries and offer healing and care to.